It was tough. There was a lot of anxiety. There was a lot of stress. There was a lot of tears. We didn't know if our family farm was going to survive. Every day we go to work to protect and take care of our animals and then to see that animal be sick and lethargic and just lifeless, it, it's heartbreaking. My grandparents both farmed on both sides of my family and so being around a farm is something that I've always known. This is where we wanna raise our children, the safe haven. It's really remarkable for me to be able to wake up every morning and know that the impact of the work we do here on our family farm touches so many other people's lives on a daily basis. And that's what keeps us going through the hard days, knowing that other people depend on us to do our job and to do it right. I joined the graduate school at the University of Minnesota to study what was then a very new disease on the horizon in North America. At that time, it was called mystery swine disease because people didn't really know what caused it. The virus would come into a farm, you would have lots of pigs born dead, you would have pigs that would get sick with respiratory disease and die at a young age, and even older age pigs would get sick and die. There was a lot of work around the world to find out the cause of that virus. Later became known as PRS, porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome. Quite often the virus would stay in a herd and remain in what we would call an endemic or a low level, but it continued to infect pigs that were born. And that's difficult on not just the farmers and their families, but the staff, the veterinarians, everybody involved with that process. It's a disease not just of large farms. It doesn't discriminate. This virus cuts across all systems. It literally is billions of dollars a year that this virus costs. Tell me a little bit about what you went through, Chris, when, when PRS came to your farm. When you get that positive result, when they confirm what you suspect, it's just, it's devastating. Do we sell the family farm? Are we gonna be able to afford to continue? But more importantly, I think the hardest thing was to see our animals get sick. And there was nothing we could do to protect them from the PRS. There really isn't a cure for this disease. And in fact, a lot of effort is spent on prevention. As a genetics company, one of our approaches was to look at other genetic solutions, and that led us really to the University of Missouri with Dr. Brather and his colleagues. A number of years ago, people identified a molecule on the surface of the cell that the PERS virus was thought to use. It's called CD163, it sticks up. The virus has to bind that to enter the pig and the cell. We came up with some strategies to use genetic engineering technology, in this case, the CRISPR system, to get rid of that protein that's on the cell surface so that the virus doesn't have anything to recognize so that it can't make the pig sick. And after the first attempt using this new technology, the pigs were resistant to the PERS virus. When we received the results, it was almost disbelief. This actually worked. We thought it would, we thought it had good chance, but we didn't know if it would or not. Changing a couple letters out of a three billion letter genome that's gonna benefit the animals, that's gonna benefit the environment. I just find that so exciting. At Genus PIC, we're in the process of trying to commercialize this new technology. To do that, first of all, we need to make many pigs and to look for, are there any unintended consequences? That this is the right thing for the pig. Secondly, food safety aspect, are there any changes in the meat itself? We're undergoing those studies now. And then finally, we need to engage with and, and address other societal concerns to bring what is a very new technology to market. Commercialization of this technology is still likely years away. One of the things that I want to do is be able to have a significant impact on food production. One of the solutions is to knock out CD163 and create pigs that don't get PERS. It's going to have a, a tremendous impact on the welfare of the animals, the sustainability of agriculture, and it's going to help the bottom line as well. Chris is the face of a lot of farmers out there that have gone through these devastating losses. And we have a new technology that can prevent that and certainly if you look across agriculture to feed a growing population, to do more with less, we need to explore these kind of new technologies going forward. My hope for the future is that this technology is going to be available on my family farm and it's going to be something that my son is going to get to see the benefits of. We've struggled a lot, but if we knew that there was one stress that we could take away from him, that we wouldn't end up with PERS again, I'd do anything in the world to be able to achieve that.